Good morning, Benny. How are you doing? Oh, oh, oh. oh, we're nice and warm in here, huh? We're nice and warm in here. Come here. Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the channel. <clears throat> And it is, uh, it is some seriously low temperatures outside. It says it, checking on my phone, it says that it's minus 29 degrees Celsius, which is this in Fahrenheit, although it says that it feels like minus 43 outside, and when you get over 40, you, you don't really need to continue to do conversions. It also says it's very foggy outside. We're in the Walmart parking lot in our tiny home on wheels, known as Lucky. Diesel heater has been ticking away all night, keeping us alive. <laughs> but uh, as well as that thing does, um, I don't run it on full blast all night. I have it much higher than I normally ever have it during this time of year, which makes it warmer in here. It also uses a lot more diesel. But even with it at that setting, I uh, I need to be wearing, excuse me, Penny, uh, a nice set of wool pajamas. Yes. And if you know me, you know that I run very hot and this is not like me at all. But those are some seriously dangerous low temperatures out there. And like I said, even though the diesel heater is doing a great job making it livable and lucky, there's still a chill in the air that is very obvious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, where my heater is situated, as soon as you sort of come into this area, you really notice the temperature difference. Um, yeah. Mm. But most importantly, nothing is frozen. Everything is still functional, except for my voice. Even more unfortunately, is I really need to use the biffy. <laughs> so we're gonna have to get dressed and make a trek into Hotel Walmart very soon. But let's take a little peek outside and see what she looks like out there today, huh? Hey, hey. Yes. Let me see. Ooh. Hey, I thought it was supposed to be foggy out here. It looks nice down here. Yeah, oh, there's a definite breeze. I've got Grace's block heater plugged into Lucky's EcoFlow. So hopefully she won't be too hard starting later today. Let's close that. That is unpleasant AF. And even the cab area is especially cold. So I find by closing the curtain, it helps trap the hot air back here for sure. And up here is a, well, it's a little bit more chilly. And the diesel, hey, we didn't use nearly as much diesel as I thought we would. So if we take a peek here, when I got back to Lucky last night, I filled this up to the tippy top. You kind of see the line there, right? So it was all the way up here. So that's how much we've used as a 10 liter tank. I don't know exactly the measurements on that. And while I'm saying that I'm surprised uh, at the amount of diesel I used, I did think it would be more. That is still a lot compared to when we have a more, well, mild sort of evening. And what is our, is our heater at? Oh, it's still running nice and hot, two red bars. So good, good, good. You're always, there's always a concern that the when the air gets that cold, what's coming in is gonna make the uh, diesel heater work harder and it might not stay as hot and then it might gum up. But so far, so good. We can check our carbon monoxide detector here. We got zero PPM, parts per million. Good, there's nothing in the air that's trying to kill us. Other than potentially the smell of Penny's dookie. Could you act cute when it comes to that? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm Yeah, okay, I gotta get dressed. And we gotta go brave that cold. Oh, all right. Now, when it comes to uh, heating Grace's block heater with uh, with the EcoFlow, I, I very lucky does not have a block heater, so I haven't been plugging a vehicle in for over two and a bit years, right? Um, but with a brand new vehicle that has a block heater and the temperature's this cold, might as well take advantage. And of course, in the past, when I had vehicles and it would get this cold, I, I would plug them in. I had no idea how much uh, power draw a block heater would take. I figured that'll be a little trickle, keep the oil pan warm, all that sort of thing, keep the block nice and hot, right? Nay, takes just under 400 watts consistently. That's a big power draw. So the EcoFlow can do that for about four hours at 100% charge, but you also don't need to have the block heater plugged in all night. Now, obviously, if you're in your, in your sticks and bricks, you're, you're not gonna come out 
in the wee hours of the morning and plug it in. You're going to do it when you get home because it's just more convenient. But for me, I had Grace plugged in last night. And when I looked all of that information up, I said, okay, I didn't plug her in overnight. Or sorry, I didn't turn her on overnight. And when I woke up this morning, I rolled over, I opened up the EcoFlow app on my phone and I turned on the AC bank of the power station and boom, she's been uh, she's been heating ever since. So hopefully then that block will be nice and warm when I go to start her for the first time today. Ooh, these cold, these temperatures aren't that common where I am actually. And they will only be lasting for a few short days in all honesty, which is nice because nobody likes temperatures this low. It's just, ooh. that being said, I do have a jacket for these temperatures that I will absolutely have to pull out today because I left my other sort of warmish winter jacket um, in BC by mistake. And uh, yeah, these cold temperatures will be a little too much for just a Dixon hoodie and reversible jacket. So we are gonna have to layer up before we go outside cause yikes, but the jacket is in the wheel well and the EcoFlow station is on top of the wheel well. Okay, so. Got to get in there. And this thing is, uh, well, it's it's a little heavy. Let's unplug a few things here. Now the question is, can I just sort of tip this guy? Ha <laughs> ha! Okay, you stay there. That's easy enough on my back. Lift this up. Where is he? Hey, I've got my poncho too. If all else fails, there he is. Oh, the big bulky winter jacket. Don't rip it. Yeah, ha ha. Okay. Oh, Penny, you did dookie. Yummy. There, okay, well that was easier than I thought it was. All right, there is a nice rated to minus 40 down jacket. I've had that for years. Hang on, I gotta clean up some cat turds. Where, oh, where has the little turd gone? Where, oh, where can it be? Pardon me. Okay, got the jacket, got the flannel, got the t-shirt. I got my fleece-lined pants here up on the bed. Uh, I usually sort of just keep them on the floor when I'm sleeping, but see the aforementioned comment of this area? They would be mighty chilly Ugh, this morning had I left them there. So, all right, let's get all bundled up here. And then we'll go do the washroom walk. You can hear the diesel heater kicking up a little higher. It does that a lot more frequently, obviously, when the temperatures are, are this low. That is why you end up using more diesel. Ugh. All right. Face line pants. Check. Toque. Check. Flannel. Check. The keys. Check. And then our down jacket. This jacket is super excessive, and since I'm a person that runs very hot, I don't usually like to wear it very often. It, only, it takes these extreme temperatures for me to even consider it. Uh, but it's not even a jacket I could probably walk around like the Walmart or the mall in for very long before I'd be sweating bullets. It's kind of like wrapping yourself in a feather tick. What am I looking for? Oh, gloves. All right, the last piece. Actually, well, do up the jacket first. Yikes! There you go. And <clears throat> it was this cold last night. I actually brought the roto packs in from Grace because, and where did it go? The little lock tumbler that secures the roto packs to Grace. Uh, the inside cylinder kept freezing. I was thawing it with my propane torch, as I do, but obviously that wouldn't get all of the uh, the liquid out, and it would just refreeze immediately. So this has been inside all night. It should be nice and thawed out and we will remount the roto packs to grace when we shove off from here today. I'm actually moving to a different location um, because the weekend is coming up and uh, my little girl's mom had a whole bunch of stuff come up this weekend. So I will have Brooklyn and I got a hotel for us, but that's not for, that's not until tomorrow night. So I'm gonna brave one more night out in these frigid temperatures. So let us begin by venturing forth to the Walmart washroom. Here we go. Oh, it 
could be worse. Whew. All right, once you get out into the breeze, it's a little bit worse. <laughs> um, so if you saw my last video, I started going to my physical therapy appointments and the uh, therapist, of course, sent me an email with some of the, well, I shouldn't say exercises, honestly, because we're starting off pretty low. Ah, we're starting off with, with stretches. So my plan was to go to the gym this morning to do that, but I was looking at them. Most of them I could just do on the bed in Lucky, but there, there's one where I definitely can't. And just take a look at my face to understand why I would not want to do it outside. So I guess we're just gonna have to be a little extra today. Well, we kind of are every day, so. All right, let's get some physical therapy done. It might not seem like much, but I do have to start, I do have to start that small um, and now some stretches to hopefully help alleviate what that just did to my back. This is why I'm doing the physical therapy because going up and down on my tootsies is difficult. Well, the one side. My right side is still just as strong and I'll show you. It's one thing about, uh, with, with Lucky and how well insulated she is and the heater working as well as it is, which it is still working just fine if you were watching my uh, repair series a while back, getting that uh, gasket maker in there and all that stuff. She's, she's performing like a champ, but the tiny home is just warm enough that I can't keep layers on for very long when I have the heater running that high. So it's usually a, a matter of derobing as soon as I get in here. All right, so what I'm gonna do, my plan is I'm gonna fire Lucky up shortly and let her run for a while to get her engine nice and warm. I will also use that energy uh, to use the DC to DC charger to charge up her house battery, which actually, what did it get down to last night? We weren't quite at 100% and it's at 88% now. So that's not too bad. It's actually, honestly, it's, it's really good, but I'm the kind of guy that doesn't, I don't like to see my battery percentage drop ever. <laughs> So we will charge that up. This is a safety precaution. Who the fridge is running at two degrees and I have it set at five. So it's struggling uh, to keep the temperature even any sort of, of any sort of moderate speed. I think I'm going to treat myself with an actual coffee this morning. We got our hard boiled eggs. We got some yogurt and you know what? I'm gonna enjoy even more treaty treats. So let's get out our coffee making stuff, which I have not done in forever. We got the little My Joe coffee press and we got the jet boil. Oh, right, I finally had to switch over to the other fuel tank. <laughs> and of course we got the jet boil Java itself. Now let's make some coffee. First, let's get ourselves some water. Like this. go okay and we gotta come here we're gonna get ourselves a coffee pod there we go then we need a my joe Just open that up stick this in here nice uh yeah put that to the side let's get this water a boiling this jet boy jet boy because I haven't had any caffeine yet. <clears throat> this Jetboil Java stove 
has been great. This is the very first Jetboil product I ever bought. I actually purchased it before I had even really start to build on the van. It was kind of like my gift to myself saying, hey, I'm gonna need this and I'm gonna do this. And that's been well over two and a half years, um, actually coming up on three since I've owned this thing. It has been going strong ever since. Highly recommend Jetboil. Um, if you're looking to buy it as well, I'll give this shout out. Craze Outdoors, a local camping supply store here in Calgary that I work with and buy a lot of my supplies from, carry all sorts of Jetboil products, and they are all awesome. When a flame gets orange, you know your water's boiled. Also, when this thing starts going, you also know the water's boiled. And while that is boiling, we're just gonna do a little cleaning of the coffee mug here. It's got a little schmutz in it. White vinegar sprayed directly into the cup or plate or utensil or whatever it is you're cleaning. I find gets the job done very well. That is how I have cleaned my dishes since day one in my van. White vinegar. That was something I picked up from Bob Wells watching one of his videos. Oh, it feels like an eternity ago at this point. Nice clean coffee cup. And if you're really particular, no, you can't, I can't taste vinegar, um, but I put a lot of creamer in my coffee. But if you're really picky, you could also then spray some water in there and give it a secondary wipeout. Or you could just not be a wuss. Oh, we're getting close, 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 close. She's a steaming. I'm gonna err on the side of safety and Turn it off early. I'm sure that water is plenty hot enough. All right, there we go. Put the vinegar back up there, and we get our My Joe coffee mug, cup, maker press, whatever. There's so many words for so many things. I'm gonna fill this right up to that 10 ounce line. Hello, hello, hello. There we go. Put the pressy cap back on. Put your knee underneath your wobbly fold-out table <laughs> so, because you're about to put a lot of pressure downwards. Coffee. Yeah, that's the nice coffee done sound. A little <laughs> sitting here making this coffee. My toes are getting a little cold, so. I am gonna put on my slippers. These are the slippers that my cousin gave me my very first Christmas in the van. And they have been, I don't use them that often, but they've been very handy when I do need them. And that time is now. There we go. Now my feeties are a heck of a lot warmer than they were and out of focus. What the yuck? We got ourselves our cup of coffee. Got a little extra drippage there as you do. You just gotta go real quick, real quick, real quick. Into the sink. Perfect. All right. Let's move this guy. Let's get some creamer in him. Let's have some breakfast. putting some stuff away down here and this, this is how cool it is these things have been sitting just sort of down here behind my driver's seat that's uh some glass cleaner yeah that's how cold it is so my glass cleaner is a block of ice as is my dashboard protectant spray <laughs> yup <laughs> Canada winter time. All right, well, we are sitting at 12.9 volts on the house battery. I say we get the old girl started, let her run for a bit, get herself up to tamp her battery charge, the one in the engine bay. And then we flip on that DC-DC charger and start generating some power here. 
Let's see how the old girl starts. I know when it's cooled, she definitely makes this weird, like whiny sound right after starting. So let's see, turn off all that for now. Ready? Here we go, Lucky. That, that little I don't know what that is. She only does it when it's cold like this. Morning, Lucky. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna let her run for quite a bit here, maybe a half hour, hour or so before I go outside and start doing anything. Um, I should actually check and see what the eco flow is at. Hang on, I can't do it on my phone because you're on my phone. Rude. Eco flows down to 38%. Yikes. Lucky may be pulling double duty uh, to recharge the eco flow station as well. Um, so what I usually do in this situation is, like I said, I will charge Lucky's house batteries up here and then I will use my inverter back there to charge the EcoFlow station. And I can't remember offhand the, uh, the amp hours on that EcoFlow, like the capacity, it's, it's, it's a big boy, but it's got fast charge. I charge it at about 1100 watts. So that puts, that puts a drain on the house batteries as well. But if I do that early enough, then we can just let Lucky run even more and use her to charge the house batteries back up, if that makes sense. And then I'll be able to plug Grace in again tomorrow morning before I use her. Um, so maybe, well, maybe we should just run both so I don't drain that eco flow too, too much lower because 38% is, is getting down there. Um, okay, time to layer up again. And we'll go fire up the Irish Pirate Queen. She's not gonna be happy with us either. Okay. Oof. Oh, hello, Grace. Gonna have to brush her off too. Well, lucky as well for that matter. Oh. oh. Okay. That works. Back here. There we go. Perfect. What am I doing out here without gloves? Mistakes were made. Hello. That's Matthew, do better. <laughs> Your core like immediately. Let's fire Grace up first. Ugh. She's been plugged in for maybe two hours here. Whoa, definitely gonna do the uh, delayed start thing here. She'll start, that's a better sound than she was making yesterday when I went out in her and she hadn't been plugged in. There she goes, winter machine. We'll make sure that she is up to proper temp. Auto, so she'll come up to temp when she can. Turn on the steered steering wheel. Actually, that's not necessary because I'm not gonna really be driving her. We're just gonna be moving her around to Lucky's rear and putting them together. Everybody just calm down. This sounds like a future Matthew problem right now. I'm gonna brush her off and then get back in Lucky where it's nice and warm. This is the one feature I hate about these Jeeps when you close them when you have the key fob in your pocket. She complains. And there's no way to turn that off unless you buy some ridiculously expensive module and modify her computer innards or some shit. It's cold and this cable is rated to minus 40 and it's still very rigid. Again, everybody just calm down. Hi. <laughs> you just being smart and staying back here where it's nice and warm. I had to jump up onto the bed to get my feet warm. My boots aren't the best and these socks whilst wool 
darn enough for this kind of weather. I may actually have to put a second set of socks on, but we'll just, you know what we'll do? <laughs> we'll just stick our feet. <sighs> there, right over to, right over to heat vent. Ah, I need to bring my boots back and put them over by the, the heat vent. Now that'd be thinking. Shut up, I'm trying to sleep. So I flipped on the DC to DC charger. It immediately jumps to 100%, which is inaccurate. But you can see that it's actually pulling 470-ish watts of a charge. You can tell that by those two arrows at the end of the 200 amp hours that are pointed up. That means it's charging up. Uh, so that's pretty decent that that, uh, that's, uh, that that charger's putting out. So we'll see how long it takes to get that full. It's about quarter to 12 right now. Uh, yeah, get that tippy topped up and we'll charge up the uh, the crawling around on the floor and dying EcoFlow. Okay, it is now 1227. We're still charging. We're pulling a little bit better wattage now, five, just over 500 watts, which means the batteries were quite a bit low. And uh, Grace is still running as well. So I'm gonna leave Lucky run. I got her heater on now. She's up to temp the engine and the air coming out of her is nice and hot. So that will help the diesel heater not have to work as hard. But I'm gonna go out and hitch Grace up so I can then turn her off and stop wasting the gas on her. So once again, let's bundly bundle up and venture forth into the freezing cold. I've just been killing the time doing some editing back here on the bed and, and staying as warm as, as I can. But now we must go. The cord's a little more loosey-goosey now, which I guess is nice. All right, Miss P, you stay there, keep nice and warm. When I get back and Grace is attached to Lucky's ass, I'll give you some treats, okay? You've definitely earned them. Why, I don't know. Probably just for being so stinking cute. Not yet, stay there. Oh! Big stretch, big stretch. Yeah, I'll be right back. All right, now, before I even attempt to move Grace, I'm gonna double check and make sure that the movable joints back here are still good. They were last night, because, yeah. I hit them with WD-40 the day before and a little bit more last night. Let's just see here. Oh yeah, we got lots of movement, heck yeah. All right, well that's good. Put this back here for now. I found that this little like, there's a gasket in here. And this is where this rotates this way. It seizes up pretty easy. Um, so yeah, little WD-40. There it is. <laughs> Has kept those free and well loose. Anyway. All right. You nice and warm in here now? Oh yeah. Oh buddy. Yeah, it is nice and warm in here. Okay. Well, let's get Grace backed up. Lucky's rear end. Alright. Oh, I hope we're close enough. Oh yeah, nice! There we go. One pin, two pins.
Okay, the light switch, got my glasses, getting ready to ship out here. Lucky's been running for quite a while. It's now 140. Yeah, battery is still charging, so it was dangerously low in my opinion. And uh, I've had the heat going up here in the front for a while. We can see that the windshield is nice and clear. Passenger side, not too bad, surprisingly. I'm just gonna turn this down. But the driver's side window, look at this. So we got a little bit of exposure happening, but look at the layers. That is, the, that is a ridge of ice right there. This is ice up here. See, you can kind of make cracks and stuff in it. <laughs> uh, all the heat coming out of there isn't enough to break through this in a in a timely fashion. So I'm gonna grab the snow brush again and see if we can't chip some of this away. Ha! It's snowing on the inside of Lucky. Check that out. <laughs> oh Canada. Frozen windows abound. Don't you hate it when your steering wheel and dash are covered in snow and your window is closed all night? Okay, so I'm not gonna drive with the diesel heater on. We're gonna turn that bad boy off. I should probably run them on high for a little bit, but when we get where we're going, we'll crank her all the way up. We'll just do that now. So that when we turn her on, she will be at max. Good to go. How's our fuel looking? Yeah, we'll top that up when we get where we're going as well. There's still some left in the roto packs there. That reminds me, we should get that maybe onto the Jeep. Well, actually, you know what? We're just going to put this uh, here for now. And then when we get where we're going, we'll drain this into here, attach this back to the Jeep. But when I go get my little girl tonight, we will top this up as well. So we got plenty of diesel. Right, Penny? I don't give a shit. Give me wet food. Not to beat a dead horse, but again, as an individual who runs very hot, I'm not going to bother putting on the big heavy down jacket just to go outside and get into the driver's seat because wearing that while I'm driving would be very uncomfortable. So we're just going to make a run for it. Before I make a run for it, let's unlock the door. Ugh. And actually, well, I don't know why I'm prepping myself like that so much. I'm going to have to scrape that window off a little bit more before we get into motion here. But... Ugh. All right. Oh. oh, it's lovely when you first get out here and you're, and you're warm. It's, ah, there we go, I can cool down. And then immediately, it's too much. All right. I get out of here before the parking lot gets too busy and I don't have room to pull the entire rig out of here. Penny, we gotta stop breathing so much. As you do. Woo. Okay. This needs to go down here. Snow everywhere. It's like it's winter. Huh. Okay, let's turn the heat back up a bit. Because it's chilly AF. Of course, I don't have my keys in my wait a second, like he's already running. All right, so we're gonna get out of here and I'm gonna go down to Fish Creek Park to do a few van life chores, minor stuff, but I'd rather do that whilst I'm out and about rather than when I get hunkered down where I'm going. So let's throw her into gear, get the heck out of here. Driving safely and carefully. Are those the same things? It can never be too safe. Door careful. Here we go. A little bit this way first. Oh, that sounded a little rough. Right, here we are. Come on, Grace.
even with those nice studded tires on Lucky, this, uh, these roads are something else. And Hull and Grace, yikes. I'm trying to think of the best route to get to where I want to go that sort of keeps me off any like major roads or odd inclines. Um, got this first break coming up here. I guess Southland is probably better than getting my big ass onto Deerfoot. So, yeah, let's do that. Oh, holy Dinah, I'm glad I made that choice. Something not great happening on Deerfoot Trail right now. I say no thank you, and I move right along. Ow. Sometimes you just get a gut feeling. Glad I went with it. What is happening? Probably somebody who panicked and doesn't understand what all the white stuff is. I saying about gut feeling that was the road I would have had to have taken it's kind of like one of those off-ramp underpasses that goes into Fish Creek Park and I could kind of see the entrance to Fish Creek Park on the other side it didn't look very plowed and because I'm towing Grace right now I don't feel like risking getting the entire rig stuck and having that be my afternoon so I'm gonna get to where I'm going first hunker down and then I guess we'll we'll run the chores over in Grace Chores is code for empty to pee bottle. Then throw out some garbage. <laughs> ah, I've made it to my destination. And I have towed the entire rig here. I love this. Don't mind me. Just towing my Jeep Wrangler through the city in the winter, very safely. Something to be said for living life the way you actually want to live it. Okay, anyway, I got to get hunkered down here now and get Grace dropped, get the gas all filled up with the heater going, let's get all that stuff. And that is to say, I'm going to try just wearing a heated vest so I'm not sweating my balls off in that down-filled jacket and we'll see how it goes. I imagine my arms are going to get quite chilly. Before we do anything else, let's fire this guy back up. Oh, we better check the exhaust real quick. Make sure it's not caked up. Nah, it was running all night nice and hot. Not a long enough drive to ruin that. Hey, Penny. You're looking very pretty. Oh, hello, me in the reflection of the carbon monoxide detector. And I'm going to go drop Grace. Be right back. Uh, yep, nailed it. Absolutely. My arms are frozen. The heated vest, this part of me, greatly warm, but my arms, nay, they're about to die. That might be a little dramatic. 
if I was going to be going out in this for extended periods of time with no shelter, then sure, I might keep this on and then put the, the down filled jacket on. But as it is right now, nay, it must hang this up. Does this little bit being outside is just, it's just ill advised for your health. Okay. So there, this is better. Whew. Ha. Zip it up, zip it up, zip it up, up, up. And then not only do I have to drain the pee bottle, but I better also get rid of my gray water tank. Oh, that's actually a good segue though. I just, I just did this up. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna drain my gray water tank, which is just this. Hang on, I gotta make some room in the tiny home. My gray water tank is just this very simple uh, Reliance water bottle under here, the big, the big, big guy. I modified that, I've had that since day one. And I don't even know how full it is, let's see. Eh, full enough that we might as well drain it since we're going. However, before we do that, let's practice a little dental hygiene, shall we? And I've got this water pick that was sent to me by a subscriber. Thank you very much, darling. Uh, my problem is, is that my water supply is under the sink and it gets quite cold. The heater vent is pointed right at the water station. Heat gets in there so that the water doesn't freeze, but it, it's still cold, especially with the temperatures the way they are. So this bad boy, I filled up and he's been sitting under here, kind of right in front of that vent. So now I can water pick away because cold water hurts my toothies. That's why I'm doing this first, adding more water to said gray tank. Reason 4,905, six and seven to have a sink in your van. All right, so there's no sort of post void dribble happening down the drain after I remove the gray water tank and hit that sink with some vinegar. And then we just gonna wipe up the mouth splooge. There we go. And now that that is nice and clean and our mouth has all been water picked with nice warm water, we gonna fill this bad boy right back up. There we go. And then we shall return him from whence he came. We have nice warm water in our water pick this evening. That's a weird looking hair on that metal eyelet. There you go. Aha, problem solved. So that has been running on high for 15 minutes now or so. Turn that guy back down to a more modest temperature so you don't turn into a fricasseed cat whilst I'm gone. And you can see right here, our battery's finally tippy topped up and there is zero watts happening either way with a nice strong 14.5 volts. So now we will use the house batteries to charge the EcoFlow, which means I gotta move some cables around, hang on. So we got the charge cable at the top there, running along here, coming all the way down, connected here, and like that from there. And we're gonna move this guy back here, plug them in there, there we go. Switch on the inverter, and now, there, we just heard the click of the EcoFlow, and away the charge goes. Climb, climb, climb. The DC to DC charger is still running. We'll give that a while to charge. Well, that charges throw out the K-cup from the coffee. And we're gonna fill up our diesel, get more when we're out and about. Okay, there we go. The roto packs cap off, do a little sealer cap out. Hello, hello, hello. There you are, my boy. <laughs> this down here. Good to go. Fill her up. That is a nice full 10 liter tank. Ooh, mama. Diesel, diesel, diesel. 
keep us alive. I always inevitably get my hands covered in diesel, hence the gloves. This guy. And right on to the roto packs. I don't think I'm going to bother putting the uh, lock tumbler in right now. So I'm probably going to spray this guy out with some WD-40. This has been a nice and free right now, just for the short drive we need to take to get rid of some garbage and pee. That'll be just fine. Back under here, lift up the sink, take out our Reliance gray water tank, close that back up. And of course, don't forget you, bubble bath. That is cold, and that is obnoxious. <clears throat> Here we go. It's a little bit more work getting rid of stuff like that, but hey, it's just sort of part of the deal when you live your life the way I live my life, and I am a-okay with that. Minus 30 degrees Celsius, probably over 45 with the wind or not. Anyway, thanks for hanging out with me today. I'm gonna go get some diesel and crawl back into my tiny home until I gotta go pick up my kiddo. In a weird way, it's very pretty out here, but it's also not temperatures worth hanging around outside in. So, until the next one, just go out there, be happy, be creative, be yourselves, most importantly, be positive, and remember, only dead fish go with the flow. Yeah.